Hello, everyone. One thing I wanted to say is just that this week there will not be a Bravo Weekly News episode. I'm just going to put out this Richard Sisters um, deep dive because I'm going to be away this weekend and celebrating a milestone birthday with some of my friends and family, and I won't be able to record. So I have recorded this in advance, and this will be the episode for the week. Patreon subscribers, I will get your episode out um, for Tuesday because I have that pre-ready as well. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Bravo Papers, a safe space for all us Bravo fans who love to analyze, deconstruct, and talk about our favorite Bravo shows ad nauseum. So join me. Bravo and Botox, and we'll catch up on all the Bravo news and read way too much into our favorite shows and Bravo liberties. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bravo Papers. Thank you for joining me. Um, Whether you are a new listener, welcome, or if you're one of my regulars, or, you know, maybe you're one of my pops in for the Richard Sisters deep dives, which is fair. I appreciate all my listeners equally, whether you're regular, semi-regular, new, been f- with me from the start. If um, if you're just tuning in for the next Richard Sisters, you might notice some differences. I have a new intro, my sound is improved, and I'm always working to improve my sound even more than it already is. So thank you. Before we get into the Richard Sisters episode today, which is part four, which is pretty wild. I think there's going to be like a lot of parts, (laughs) which what I've realized is that you all are into that because I get like all these messages and DMs and people are like, can it be a hundred (laughs) parts? So I'm good with that. I'm good with a hundred parts because, you know, it's one of those deep dives that there's, there's just so much content on these ladies and they keep giving us new stuff. Like I did a whole note taking thing for Paris and Love. I'm not finished. I had to go back to season one though. So I finished season two first because it was like the new season. I was watching it anyways. And then in the middle of it, I'm like, God, I got to take notes on this. Like this is just too good. But season one, even though I had watched it when it originally came out, when it originally came out, I wasn't doing this the the Richard sisters thing or I was and I was just more focused on House of Hilton so I was like okay I'm gonna go back to season one and then do like a full Kathy thing because Kathy is like her own beast in a way in terms of like I I think she's a little different from the other two and I kind of want one of the parts to be just looking at her so yeah listen Most people are so friendly about the Richard Sisters deep dives, and I get 99% of the feedback is positive. But I have had a little bit of like criticism. And by little bit, I mean I've had two people (laughs) from the last episode who felt that I was too biased against Kyle Richards. Listen, this is a podcast. It is not hard-hitting news or some sort of professional news publication. People listen to this podcast to hear my take on things, just like I listen to a variety of podcasts to hear their takes on things. If you want to listen to this and hear my opinion, there has to be bias because opinions, all opinions and points of view are inherently biased. They cannot exist without it. Now, a lot of people might enjoy my podcast because they agree with my point of view, right? And you might enjoy other podcasts because you agree generally with their point of view. And then maybe once in a while you don't, but you kind of suck it up because that's being a human and a grown, mature adult, right? Like this is not, if, if you, if people want me to just sit here and just go over exactly what happens in every episode with no bias, then I would have to give zero commentary. I would have to just say, Kyle walks into the room. Kyle says this. Kim responds this. That's what unbiases. <laughs> it's just reporting the facts, 
But any sort of commentary, analysis, opinion is going to have bias. And once again, this is a podcast. That's what podcasts are. We tune into podcasts to either hear, it depends on what, you know, what kind we're tuning into, but we want to hear either storytelling, we might, you know, tune into one that's like scientific to because we do just want to hear about like new discoveries and facts, or we tune into ones like mine and, you know, many others out there like uh, Watch What Crap Ends or She Speaks Bravo or, you know, whatever the podcast is because we want to hear people's take and people's viewpoints on the most recent episodes, right? And we want to hear them, you know, dissect it and analyze it, and analyze it, right? Now, I understand that there's levels of bias, like people could be more extreme sometimes, you know, when they're like not pointing out the flaws of their favorites, or they're ignoring the, um, you know, the positives of their, of the people that they don't like. But I don't think I do that, right? I was listening back to the other one. I do point out ways in which I have sympathy for Kyle, the things that she's dealt with as a family member of an addict that I could relate to. And and I did acknowledge the difficulties that she's had to deal with. And I also acknowledge all the messed up stuff that Kim does as well. But at the end of the day, Kyle is often an a-hole. She just is. And I'm trying to like every season I give Kyle a chance, like literally every season, because I've always felt like she has a good heart. So I always go into every season like I'm going to give Kyle a fresh chance. And this season, this newest one, I've given her the biggest chance because this season I was like, maybe a lot of her poor decisions have been because of Mauricio, because Mauricio is a jerk. And being in a bad marriage can make you a jerk, even if you're not, right? So kind of like Katie and Tom Schwartz, like a lot of people started to like her and saw a change in her after she got out of a toxic relationship. However, we didn't see that with Kyle this season. I'm sorry, I tried. I tried to give her a chance, but she's like a recent example, literally very recent example. Today, okay, I see a clip from the after show where Kyle is mocking Sutton about the whole Merce thing and having his ashes. And she's like, oh, never heard of this guy Merce before. First time I've ever heard this guy's name. But whatever, if she wants to use that as an excuse to go to Spain and like, you know, you know, use his ashes and spreading them as an excuse, then I guess that's fine. Like, what a crappy thing to say. Why do you have to say that? Even if you think it, like, it's just a mean thing to say. And then in the church scene with her and Sutton, she's like, Sutton apologizes and they get all emotional. And I loved that scene. And like, I was like, wow, they, you know, they have this connection. They've both lost a friend to suicide. But then Sutton apologizes and Kyle doesn't apologize. I had let that go. I was like, maybe Kyle was just like, I gave her the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, maybe she was just being a good listener and was just sitting there, like just letting Sutton kind of have her moment. Maybe she apologized off camera. I don't know, whatever. Maybe they talked at a different time. I did give her the benefit of the doubt. But then again, I saw the after show. <laughs> so it's like every time I give her a chance, I I feel like I'm disappointed. And, you know, that saying, someone shows you who they are, believe them. I, I'm going with that. Okay. So listen, as I do this recap today and this Richard Sisters deep dive, I am going to try to be as fair as I can. But that being said, when Kyle's acting like an a-hole, I'm going to call her on it. (laughs) But I'm also going to call Kim on it and Kathy. Okay? So hopefully that'll make people happy. (laughs) I don't know. (sighs) man. So I think I fixate too much on like somebody. It's just like the the people who like Kyle like will send you a novel about how you're a terrible person because you don't like Kyle. Like it's kind of wild. Okay. One thing I want to say as well, I'm not going to go right into season two because I had one of my Patreon subscribers, shout out Patreon. By the way, we have so much fun over on Patreon. So if you're interested in that and you want to hear me complain more about um, Kyle. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, a little bit. Um, but if you want to come over to Patreon and hear more of my unfiltered thoughts, um, and I do talk about Beverly Hills almost every week. <laughs> 
and what's going on with Beverly Hills after show and and things like that and my thoughts on the episodes. If you want to hear more of that, you know, come on over to the Patreon. We have a great time in the comments and, uh, you know, sharing little tidbits and things that we've heard. And and it's great. We have like such a fun community. So one of my Patreon subscribers suggested that I watch the Dinner Party from Hell director's cut, which I did because I thought it was a great idea. And I want to go, so I know we're going back a little because I already recapped season one with the last Richard Sisters one, but there are some interesting tidbits in there that I think we could talk about with Kathy and Kyle. So let's do it. So on the way, so put your, everyone just put your headspace back in the dinner party from hell day, which I know is easy for all of us because it's, it's one of the most iconic housewives scenes ever, I would say. Right. Like, I think we could all agree if we were going to make like a top 10, it would be in there for sure. It would be a top five. So on the way to Camille's, Faye and Kyle are discussing and we don't see this is stuff that we don't necessarily see in the original. So Faye and Kyle, it's the director's cut. Okay, they're discussing Camille's history, including how she was in two softcore pornos, how she was in Playboy and an exotic dancer. So, you know, I would just thought that was interesting because when you watch the episode, it does kind of seem like the original episode, it does kind of seem like Camille calls Faye out out of nowhere, which she still does. But then there's also the aspect of like, Camille was kind of right. Like Kyle did bring Faye to sort of talk crap about uh, Camille. So I don't like, it's just... I do think that Kyle has gotten, and I think the reason why people are often forgiving of her is, well, not lately, but the reason they had been prior to maybe the last few seasons is because she has gotten a good edit. She really has. (laughs) So Camille says Kyle asked if she could bring a friend, which Kyle says is true, um, but didn't say who. So Camille didn't know it was going to be Faye. And clearly the two of them... I don't know, don't think highly of each other. So that was a calculated choice, right? And I think this is the kind of thing that, like, it's kind of like she's playing a game. Um, So Camille says, like, she knew immediately why Kyle brought Faye and that she was there to attack. So that's kind of why Camille's on, like, such, I guess, a defense. I mean, Camille still acts like a complete a-hole in this whole scene, (laughs) as we all remember, right? But the other girls feel the same way, Kyle and Faye, which is fair because... Like, they feel like Camille has her friends to attack them, which is fair. However, it is at Camille's house. So they, so I don't know if that makes a difference. But anyways, but yeah, there is a flaw in that argument, though, because Kyle's like, I feel like it was a setup for uh, for them to attack Faye, but Faye wasn't invited. So that is the flaw in that argument. Um, So Allison says that, sorry if I get off of the Richard sisters topic in this, there is you know, a key part with Kim and Kyle from the director's cut. But I do just want to kind of go over some of the other stuff because it's it is very interesting. Allison says they get there and Allison really gravitates towards Kim, which I thought was funny. And Kyle's just kind of sitting there like sneering. And she's like, Kim is fun and that she likes her a lot. And Kim's like, oh, I like you, too. So it's like right there. It's funny how like I just think Kyle and Kim have different types of women that they gravitate, gravitude, I'm sorry, grav, gravitate towards for friendships, which I get. Like, I have a childhood best friend. Like, we've been friends since, like, kindergarten. We're still friends. But we just, you know, we grow, grew up and our lives went in different directions. We don't live super close to each other, okay? Along the way, when our lives were, like, quite separate because we were living far away, but still, you know, friends talking on the phone, texting, that kind of thing, we made like friend groups as adults, which happens right after you get out of college or university, whatever. And she just, the types of girlfriends that she has are very different from the type that I have. Neither are like, quote unquote, bad or wrong. We just, you know, we are different people. Part of the reason that we're friends is because of our history and because we know each other so well and, and like each other, despite the fact that we're different, right? But the types of women that she's friends with are just not the type of women I would be friends with. Like, not for any bad reason. I can get along with, you know, we can all be, like, civil and still, like, go to an event and have fun. But they're just not, like, the type that I would be super close with and vice versa. And neither of us takes that as an insult, right? So I think that's true of Kim and Kyle. Like, I just think that that's why, I think that's part of the reason 
why Kyle, uh, or sorry, why Kim has had trouble, because I don't think she always connects with the same women that Kyle connects with. And I think Kyle has connected with like the cast. And most of the cast just like happened to be the type of girls that Kyle would like to be friends with. But for Kim, it wasn't like that. And that's no one's fault. Like that's not Kim's fault. That's not Kyle's fault. That's just how it worked out. So that's why I think Kim sometimes like feels maybe a bit more isolated in the friend group. So it, it's not surprising to me <laughs> that Allison likes Kim, but not Kyle. Because yeah, they're sisters, but they are quite different, right? It's clear Allison is drunk, as we've all seen. Um, she's like acting super weird and making this weird toast about how it's girls' night and they're supposed to be bad in a controlled situation and they're going to get annihilated, but they're going to have control of their annihilation. <laughs> it's just, yeah, more wild stuff. Um, then we have the scene that we all remember, the part that Camille calls out Faye for being in Playboy. And it's so weird because Camille was in Playboy. But Camille says it's because it's... The reason Camille says it's wrong is because she was coming off a murder trial, which I don't know if that was in the original confessional or if they'd cut it. But in this director's cut, it's there. Like she's like, I wasn't doing it coming, like getting clout off of a murder trial. So yeah, <laughs> which listen, I kind of see her point, but I still think who cares? Faye, I guess she was trying to make some money and fame for herself and whatever. That just depends on your opinion. So Camille doesn't want Allison to feel like she has to do a reading because she was a guest at the dinner party. And this wasn't so she wasn't like supposed to be a show pony, as Camille says. But like Lisa Vanderpump keeps poking her. It is kind of rude, to be honest. Like, I don't think I don't know. Like Lisa Vanderpump's like, oh, if there's a doctor, you ask them questions. Yeah, I actually think you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Like Lisa tries to justify it that way. And I'm kind of like, mm, I think when people are off work and they're trying to relax, you, like not that you can't ask them questions like, do you enjoy your work? What's your favorite part of your job? But like to ask them to like do their job, like can you come in the bathroom and look at this mole? Like that's, I don't think you should do that. Anyways, they keep pushing her and it is pretty rude. Even though Allison is totally weird and acting weird, they do keep pushing the read. Finally, Kyle kind of, it's mostly like Kyle and LVP and Kyle's like, we're just curious. And like, I don't know, she tries to make it like it's all innocent, um, but then looks to Faye and goes and, you know, and I think Allison says like, I'm I'm not on the clock right now. And then Kyle looks like at Faye and is like, well, maybe I should whip out my credit card in a very rude tone. And then Allison's like, don't tempt me. Don't get me started, you know. <laughs> so listen. Allison is wild and acts crazy, but she does get a little bit provoked, okay, if we're going to be fair to Allison. Um, Camille warns Allison, you know, don't, she warns the other girls, like, don't poke her because she might say things that you're not ready to hear. It's better to have a reading one-on-one -on -one because personal stuff can come out, which I think makes sense. Allison then, you know, because Kyle keeps poking her, Allison says Kyle will marry twice, as we all saw. You know, he'll never emotionally fulfill you. Know that. Uh, but you'll stay with him and he'll take care of you. And as soon as the kids are bigger, you'll have nothing in common. Well, that came true, didn't it? Um, it was mean, but she was asking for it. I'm sorry. Like, literally and figuratively, she was asking for it. <laughs> in her confessionals, Kyle, or sorry, Camille says that she thinks she was confusing Kyle with her and Kelsey because they were about to get divorced. But I actually don't think so <laughs> now that all this stuff is happening. And then Allison says, now this I thought was interesting in relation to maybe women, because she says, make sure you don't put the walls down for females coming into your life. I feel like you talk to males more easily than females. And Camille says, no, that's me, not Kyle. However, maybe that was like in relation to Morgan Wade. Like maybe Allison meant it more as a like, you might have like, you might be bi-curious or you might have sometimes have attractions to females and you're not like fully in touch with that. So you, and you just have the walls up because you just want to be this like traditional married, perfect family kind of woman, right? 
um, you know, white picket fence, nuclear family kind of thing. But yeah, that's a, like looking back on it, I thought that was really interesting that she said, make sure you put the walls down for females coming into your life. Interesting. Kyle says she's a girl's girl. Camille, which, listen, I don't think Kyle is a guy's girl. Like, do I think she's always a great friend? No, but I do think she's a girl's girl, like overall. Um, <laughs> Camille and Kyle start talking about New York City and the fight that they got into. And Camille says she's defensive with girls. And then Allison says, well, Kyle is on the offensive, which Kyle is like, hmm. So I thought that was interesting, too, because Kyle is often on the offense. Like, even with the stuff with with Sutton that I was talking about earlier. It's like she didn't need to say that. She wasn't like defending herself from Sutton because when they're talking about that episode, in that episode, Sutton had come to her like hard in hand and apologized in the chapel. So I thought it was interesting that Allison says Kyle is offensive or on the offense because it's like, yeah, you. you it's like she's in one way, she's defensive, like she's got her guard up. But then in another way, it's like she it's almost like she comes at you before you can come at her in some in some instances. Um, and I think she sometimes does that with her sisters. And I think they do it, too, which is why I think they fight a lot. Um, so Faye accuses Ka uh, Camille. Sorry. Faye accuses Camille of lying about the Kyle thing. And Kyle says she felt like her and Faye, you know, were being ambushed and she stands up. She gets frustrated. And she's like, I don't get it. I've never had a problem with a woman like this in my life. I don't get it. Really? <laughs> You've never had a problem with a woman like this in your life, Kyle. Okay. Your sister is sitting right across from you. Camille says, I don't have a problem with you. And after New York, you called me a delusional B word in confessional. You know, Camille says, I think it might be jealousy. I don't think like Kyle's Camille, uh, jealous of Camille's like, family or like relationship or anything like that she, money wise I think yes because I think Kyle was still like on the come up and was maybe wanted the status that that Camille has okay so they leave after all this we all know like the big blow up all that and Kyle starts to get mad and says kind of aggressively because during all of this Kim and Taylor break out into a fight because they went back to the New York City thing, right? So now Kim and Taylor start fighting again. And that's all happening while they're mouthing off back and forth to Allison, right? And they leave and Kyle's mad and she aggressively, while they're walking down the path to the car, you know, she goes to Kim and like in her face and is like, we already have something going on with Camille. And then you guys start. I don't understand this. Like kind of like a like an aggressive lecture. And Kim's like, well, she brought up the word insecure and you said you brought it up at the airport. And then Kyle loses it and says, if I'm already having a problem with Camille and there's already problems and fighting, why do you bring that up? And Kim is like, I didn't bring that up. And Kyle's like, in New York, you did. <laughs> so then Kyle says in her confessional, we're having a terrible night. All of a sudden, you, Kim, decide to attack Taylor. Uh, Taylor. This is just adding fuel to the fire. Put your gasoline and matches away. That is somewhat true in the sense of like Kim kind of, Kim did jump in. But although the topic of what she had said and the whole her and Taylor thing did get brought up like naturally during the discussion. So I did kind of understand how that got brought up. I was shocked watching this director's cut at how mad Kyle is at Kim of all people on their way out. Because if I was Kyle, I'd be more just like mad at Camille and Allison in this whole situation. Like I, I it, to me, it kind of came out of nowhere. Like it wasn't clear. Like, yeah, her and Taylor fought too, but it was really just between Kim and Taylor. Like it didn't involve anyone else. They were just kind of going back and forth. And you're like, why don't you get your lips blown up some more, whatever. So I was like a little taken aback that Kyle was so annoyed. Like I could understand her being annoyed by this, but she was like really mad about it. So after, I do honestly think though, it's because I don't think that Kyle wants Kim to fight with her friends. And I think that Kyle does take her friend's side because I think that even though Kim is her sister, I just think her and Kim are so different. And she, 
you know, the girls that she's friends with are more her type of girls. So I think if Kim wasn't her sister, I think Kim would be kind of like the outsider girl from like the group of popular girls. But it's almost like Kyle has to deal with her not fitting in because it's her sister. And they're on the show, obviously. So then we flash back to inside. Allison says Kyle is a little B and she's the ringleader and a mean girl. And it was the one who makes the girls. She was the one, kind of girl in high school that would make other girls want to kill themselves, which is a pretty wild thing to say. I mean, do I agree that Kyle is like the leader, ringleader of mean girls? I do. I think it's going a little far, the second part, obviously, but Allison was obviously crazy, not to mention very drunk. After Kyle and them leave, Allison says about Mauricio. <laughs> this I thought was interesting. She's like, oh, he, I could have said more. He likes his nannies. And Camille's like, oh, I don't know about that. I just, I just know that he really loves women. And she says it twice. So, yeah. These rumors have been going on a long time. So they leave and they all go home in one car and they make Kim go in her own car on her own. And this upsets Kim. And Kyle's like, well, it's because of where we live, da da da. But like Kyle, like, like Kim is upset. So Kim calls Kyle in the other car, but Kyle purposely doesn't pick up. Like she's like, oh, Kim's calling. And then they all go to the polo lounge and Kim is left out and she keeps trying to call and Kyle's not answering. It's clear that Kyle wants to get rid of her sister so she can just hang out with her girl group because she is kind of like the ringleader. But you know, like when you're, when you have like one person, like you're out having fun and there's one person who's kind of like ruining the group dynamic or who just doesn't fit in and you just want to have fun and, and you, and we've all done this at some point in our high school or our 20s where we've been selfish and we've been like, let's just have fun. So, you know, maybe one person doesn't get invited or gets iced out or whatever the situation is. But it's still mean. Like, I did feel bad for Kim. Like, even when Kim calls, like, Kyle has to say, instead of just looking at her phone and seeing it's Kim and hanging up, she has to say to all of them, oh, it's Kim, you know? Like, I don't know. It's just clear that, like, Kim doesn't fit in. And like Kyle doesn't care to help the situation right like she does kind of like I kind of see in one side I see how I see how Kyle can be embarrassed and whatever because her sisters are kind of kooky and weird and they don't always abide by normal social etiquette and she just wants to have fun with her friends so I can see that but then on the other side I can see why Kathy and Kim feel that Kyle chooses their friends over her sisters. And I can see why maybe that was part of what pushed Kathy to freak out on the um, Aspen trip was that she felt like that outsider loner, right? Because Kim's way of dealing with it or with problems in general is probably substances, right? But I think Kathy's is a scary temper. And again, that doesn't excuse Kathy having a temper and screaming terrible things at people, etc. She should she needs to learn to handle those emotions like an adult and talk about them. But it also doesn't erase Kyle's role in this as well. So then in the car, just if you want some guarantee about this mean girls thing, Faye pulls up her naked pics of Camille on her phone and starts passing them around and has them saved in an email, which it seems like Kyle already knew about. So there's that. Anyways, <laughs> which I think is kind of messed up. So, all right, let's go into season two. <laughs> So, you know, we ended with the season one reunion where, you know, Kim and Kyle were talking about the, um, what's it called? It's the limo ride. And, you know, there was really tension about the fact that Kyle had outed her as an alcoholic and Kim didn't really admit anything at the reunion, nor did she want to talk about it. So that's kind of where we left off, just to give you a reminder not to mention we had all of season one where it seems where, like I said, Kim was a little bit isolated from the friend group. Kyle seemed like she was fitting in with the group and getting a lot. Well, not with Camille, but anyways, <laughs> but with everyone else for the most part. And yeah, so that's kind of where we ended off now in season two. And again, I just pulled out stuff that I think is relevant to the Richard sisters. 
Okay. So in season two, we all remember Taylor has her breakdown. So this is the season that's like, it's like really tough to watch in some ways because now we kind of know what's going on behind the scenes with Taylor and her ex-husband and the abuse and all that. So Taylor's having like a mental breakdown on their trip. And this is, you know, she climbs in the suitcase, she's acting wild, and Taylor turns to Kim and says that they've both been through so much and they can relate. And it's and and Kim kind of like comforts her and like sort of like talks her off the figurative ledge, right? And Kyle says it's in her confessional, it's funny to see Kim mothering Taylor since she's always getting mad at me for mothering her. She doesn't say it in a snarky tone. Um, but I still thought it was weird because like Kim, yeah, she's mothering Taylor, but it's in like a um a comforting, like maternal way, like, shh, everything's gonna be okay, honey. You know? <laughs> it's not like in a scolding lecture way. Right? So I'm kind of like, I think you know the difference, Kyle. Um, and then Kyle says, well, and maybe that's the problem, because I do think that's the problem of perception, is that Kyle feels that even though she's maybe lecturing and being a little harsh, she's doing it for Kim's best interest. But Kim just sees it as like incessant nagging, <laughs> right? So again, it is that sort of difference in perception. And Kyle says, I feel bad for Taylor, but we're on vacation. Come on. Meanwhile, everyone else is kind of showing compassion and worry. So it's like, it's stuff like that that, again, stuff like that that I'm just like, ugh. So we flip forward. I'm I'm moving forward now to the house in Palm Desert. So, okay, we remember how in the season one finale, Kim was like, you stole my goddamn house. Okay, Mauricio in this season, he's really mad about this. He, him and Kyle are talking and he says he needs time to get over it and to forgive Kim. This is something I guess that really hurt him. It seems like it's because maybe financially he's helped Kim out. He doesn't, they don't say that explicitly, but Kyle has said that or alluded to it. So we get Kim's point of view on this. She says in a confessional, she asked to take out $20,000 from her share of the house as a loan. However, Kyle says she bought both of her sisters out. And then Kim is like, yeah, like I would sell that house for 20K. Kyle then does say it, it it's the sentimental aspect that she gets that on Kim. Like she understands that it's not really about the money. It's about the sentimental aspect. Although Kim seems to think it's about the money. But that the house, she says, but the house is just as much Kim's as it is hers. Which, like, that is a nice sentiment, but I guess Kim doesn't feel that, so I don't know. Like, you know, maybe there was something that Kyle could have said, because Kyle says that in a confessional. Maybe there was something that, a conversation that could have been had that would have maybe, I don't know, made Kim feel more like it was her house in a way, so that she could go to it. So it, that one, it's a tough, it is a tough call right? Because it's like, I understand that maybe Kim feels like in her not right mind or in a stressful or whatever time in her house, she made this decision and she shouldn't have. Okay. And Kyle feels like we, it's, it's a business thing. Like you made that choice and now you regret it. That doesn't give you the right to be mad at me. For this, I am on Kyle's side. Shocking, I know, but based on everything I've researched and looked into, and I'm not going to get into it today for this recap. I'm going to get into it on one of the later seasons, the one where they actually go to the house and Kim and Kyle have a one on one sit down about the house and talk about it. Then I'm going to get into it. But just, you know, spoiler alert technically, legally, and in basically every other way, Kyle did not steal the house. <laughs> okay. Now, emotionally and mentally there might be it doesn't mean that kim's feelings aren't valid but legally kyle did not steal her house okay so there's that okay but again i'm going to get into that in a later recap 
So then in a later episode or scene, Kim says that Kyle picks, picks, picks and doesn't trust Kim to make the right decisions, which that is exactly what I was saying in my last recap. Okay, so if you listen to the whole thing where I talk about addiction and why addicts will often, you know, use even more when they feel like they're being shamed, et cetera, or when like if you pick and pick and like, why can't you just get it together and do the tough love thing? It often results in like the addict hears that as you believe I'm a loser who can't make the right decision. So clearly that is what Kim is hearing. Kyle really breaks down when she finds out that Kim is dating that that crusty guy, the one that Brandy says looks like a bull mastiff, which I'm sorry, that was so funny. Um, <laughs> if he was a good person, I wouldn't laugh about that, but he's clearly an abusive weirdo. Um, you can tell Kyle knows something about this guy that we don't know. She cries, and it's like Kim isn't even upset that Kyle is crying about it. Like, it's almost like Kim understands. And, you know, Kyle cries that Kim will be moving further away. So, like, listen, I've never denied and I've never for a second thought that Kyle doesn't truly love her sister and worry about her. And that deep down, like, her biggest concern is Kim's going to get hurt or Kim is going to die. You know, and clearly she doesn't want her with this guy because you can tell, like, he's maybe into substances as well. He's going to be an enabler. He's controlling all this stuff, right? So in, an, in a later scene, Kyle has a seance and she has a psychic, not Allison. <laughs> and the psychic says, Big Kathy, which I thought this was interesting. We got a little Big Kathy um, sighting here. Well, not sighting, but say on sighting, whatever, says Kyle needs to stop acting like the mom to Kim. Thank you. And let Kim make her own decisions. And Kyle does say, to be fair to Kyle, that she needs to work on this. So she does acknowledge that. So thank you. Yes, I understand that Kyle doesn't know everything about addiction and that, you know, she didn't bother to pick up a book, etc. And that, you know, and in general, to give her fairness to this was like 20 years ago and it was not as people were not as sympathetic and, 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 you know, culturally attitudes have changed and things like that. I understand that. But there were people telling her that her approach wasn't working, including a psychic <laughs> and Kim. And more people will say that throughout the season. Okay. So Kyle says she doesn't think um, the man that Kim is with is right for her, and she she does say she has trouble trying to control things. Here's the thing with Kyle is Kyle knows sometimes when she's doing things wrong, but it's like she can't stop herself. It's like she knows that she's got to stop momming her, et cetera, but she doesn't almost doesn't know how to do it, which I relate to that a lot. <laughs> Cause when you're dealing with you know, an addict or somebody with an addiction, you know what you should, even once you do know what you should and shouldn't do, it's still hard to not do it because a lot of that is logic and your emotions can take over. So Kyle does say that, you know, the trying to control things, like that's what her mom, Big Kathy, taught her and she doesn't know any other way. So yeah, it's also like these behaviors that we've learned since childhood it's hard to unlearn them, or it takes time at least. Um, this is the season two, and I think this is kind of what makes for an interesting um, insight into Kyle and Kim, is that Brandy joins. So Brandy comes in, and it is, Kyle has a lot of insecurity when Brandy comes on. I think it's because of Mauricio. <laughs> Like, I think if Kyle was, like, secure in her marriage and Mauricio wasn't messing around on the side and being, uh, you know, a bad husband, basically, and a cheater, then I don't think she would have had such a bad reaction to Brandy. So I do blame Mauricio for some of that. Um, Kim has a breakdown at one point over her family. Uh, sorry, I am kind of, I am going in order, even though it might not seem like it, because we do just have the general reaction to Brandy, but then in the storyline of the season, it goes back to Kim and this this guy, okay? Because 
I'm going in order of episodes, but I'm not giving you every single scene. So it may seem disjointed because I'm only like I might pull out two things that happen in episode six. One is Brandy coming on and Kyle reacting. The other is Kim having a breakdown. It does make sense if you watch the full show, but we're just focusing on the Richard sisters. So Kim has a breakdown about her family not liking Ken. She breaks down to Kyle. She says she's happy. Kyle asks if, like, are you really happy? Because, I mean, to be fair, like, Kim is sitting there sulking and crying. So she doesn't seem happy. And then Kim's like, if I say I'm happy, I'm happy. And here's the thing with Kim, and here's the problem that I think is difficult for Kyle, is that it's like the person is an adult and they're telling you they're okay, but you also know that they're not. And that is a hard position to be in. But Kim is freaking out because her kids don't like him. Kim says he's the boss. Kyle says that the girls do tell her that he's controlling and that he seems obsessed with her, which I could see that. I mean, come on. So Kim feels like, says that she feels like no one supports her. She's given her kids everything. She's upset that they can't just let her have time with her boyfriend. It sounds like maybe they think that Kim's not spending enough time with them. And Kim feels like they're used to her being around all the time. And so they're not used to her being with Ken more. But I'm sure if we spoke to her daughters and her kids, they would say, no, it's just that Ken is too possessive. Because listen, that's what controlling people do, right? They try to, especially like these like abusive controlling men, they try to isolate you from your family, kids, sisters, relatives, every, it's everyone against us, right? Because they think that that will, because they're so fearful of losing the person. Okay, so Kim has an absolute breakdown in the dress store. And Kyle is supportive and soft in this moment. And she says, like, I, I've got to let Kim work on herself and not jump into it in her confessional, which, good. We see a little bit of progress there, right? Kyle does mention that Kim looks very thin. Kim says she can't eat. So I'm sure that's partly substances and also stress and her anxiety and just everything. You know, then we have, so then the next kind of big thing that happens this season is the whole white party thing with um, Taylor's husband sending the lawyer's letter, cease and desist, whatever it was, to Camille. And Kyle has to basically tell Taylor she can't come into the white party. And we all remember how she handled that. She has a complete breakdown. Even after they're gone and like Kyle has made it clear she feels bad about this. And Taylor's made it clear that she doesn't, she isn't holding it against Kyle. But Kyle like runs out of the house and runs to the limo and is like, I'm so sorry. to Like, it's kind of annoying. Like she sort of makes it about her. But I think, and I do think that Kyle feels bad, but I also think on the other side, this is one thing that Kyle often does is that she is, she's very worried. And this is why I even took note of this. It wasn't just so I could criticize Kyle. Um, she's very worried about how she comes off to her social group and friends. Whereas like Kim doesn't care as much and that is something that affects Kyle deeply. So she, that's why I think the breakdown happened. Because like it's like she had to prove to Taylor, to the friend group, to the cameras and the audience, I'm a good friend, right? I'm a good person. Because I think she really cares about what people think about her. And I, I do think a lot of the breakdown was more because of the cameras and the audience. Again, I do think she felt bad. But I really think that that's something that irks Kim and Kathy, who were more like, they. yeah, they, don't get me wrong, if anyone cares about how they come off to the public, it's Kathy Hilton. But I do think that they feel that Kyle will put, like, the show and the friend groups and how she looks to the audience ahead of them. I think that's what what has caused a lot of fights, right? So now we go to the trip to Hawaii. This is a big point of contention this season between Kim and Kyle. So this is probably one of the biggest things. Um, okay, so Kim misses her flight, which is annoying <laughs> for Mauricio's birthday. 
because they're they've got this trip planned they've got their itinerary they've got events and you know stuff that they're gonna do but at the end of the day they miss their flight it, it happens and everyone is like oh man okay well she's gonna have to catch the later one i guess we'll see her tomorrow whatever kyle is obsessed with this like Even though clearly Kim's not making the flight, everyone is kind of fine. Everyone's like, oh, well, they'll join us later. Like, everyone goes about their day. She keeps obsessing about it. And then even after Kim gets there, she cannot let it go. (laughs) This is one of those ones where I could really see both sisters' sides. In one way, it's like, I missed the flight. I can't go back in time and change it. Get over it. Let's enjoy the trip now. But then on the other side, I can understand how there's all this other stuff going on beneath the surface. Like, it's not really about the flight for Kyle. It's about, I can never rely on my sister. She's late because she's with this abusive guy and I hate him. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it's really about. But that being said, I would say that Kyle doesn't handle it well. She says in her confessional that she's trying not to let Kim missing the flight bother her or ruin Mo's birthday she's not doing a great job um lvp does also fan the flame okay like lvp kind of brings it up more than she needs to basically she said but she does say though and i thought that this was important and something that kyle really needed to hear she says kyle needs to let kim make her own decisions and just let the relationship with ken this guy play out okay She's like, your sister's in a place where she's so insecure, she'd rather be with this man, Ken, than be alone. I thought LVP, she hit the nail on the head. There's nothing you can do. Kim is a grown adult, right? You have to just let it play out. It's going to go up in flames or however it's going to end, hopefully. And I get it, like, If you've ever dealt with a friend or family member in a relationship with an abusive person, it's so, like, there is so little you can do besides let it play out, unfortunately. I mean, when they are ready, and if you can convince them, you know, you can help them get to a safe place, um, but you cannot force them to break up. And usually when you try, they just go closer to the abuser because they're like, well, he's the only one who I have on my side and he's the only one who understands me. You know, it's a very difficult situation. So I do have empathy for Kyle in it. Um, But I also feel like her obsessing about the missed flight does kind of ruin the trip. And it does, you know, put a wedge further between her and Kim. So Kim shows up late to Hawaii and, you know, she's suddenly changes her story like they're late because Ken had to work. And then I don't know why Kyle and Mauricio bring this up at dinner, but they do. So they bring this up at dinner. They question it. They're like, I thought, you know, it was just because of this. And now you're saying it's because of work. Then it's over. They do a toast and they move on. But as soon as the toast is over, Mauricio starts grilling Ken And this scene, like, it does seem like Kyle was ready to let it go for the dinner scene. So, and I mean, this is where, like, Mauricio, he doesn't always get as much flack as he deserves in these early seasons. He can be kind of a jerk. Like, he starts grilling Ken about it, why he had to work the day they're leaving. And then Kim snaps at him, and then Kyle jumps in, and then Mauricio gives Kyle this awkward kiss, like he's, like, competing with the two of them. So then Kim kisses Ken in the same way. It's very weird. Like, it's almost like, let's prove, like, who's the happy. I don't know. It's a very weird. It's almost like they're trying to prove, like, we're fine. No, we're fine. No, we're fine. No, we're fine. Like, it's, yeah, it's crazy. So the dinner goes on and Kyle starts kind of whispering about how she can't deal with Kim showing up and acting like nothing happened and acting like everything is normal. And then she starts to cry And, you know, I get why Kyle cries, but what I don't get is why she needs to make it a thing about, like, quote unquote, telling the truth. Because in the birthday speech, because he gets brought up. So she does this little birthday speech for Mauricio and it gets brought up again. And Kim's like, do we have to talk about this? Like, it's his birthday. 
Exactly. I'm sorry. I got it. Like, was Kim wrong for missing the flight and lying? Yeah. But she already missed the flight. She made up a bad excuse. She probably couldn't remember the original excuse because of drinking, etc. with this guy. And then, like, just enjoy Mauricio's birthday dinner at this point. Like, you're, we're beating a dead horse. There's no point in talking about it because it there's no solution. And to be fair, like, Kim did say, like, I'm sorry we missed a flight. Like, I don't know what, like, what else can she say? There's really nothing else that you can say. Um. Anyways, so Kim does say, like, I don't want to talk about it. It's his birthday. So, yeah, it's, it kind of ruins it. But, you know, this whole thing that, and and Kyle's been doing this for a long time on this show. It's like this obsession with truth telling. It's just a very black and white way to think about life. The truth is not always what we need in every situation. Sometimes it's okay to, if you're in a public situation, like someone's birthday dinner, it's okay to focus on that birthday dinner and deal with issues later. It's also okay that it, it, she, they probably missed the flight. Let's let's just be bluntly honest. They probably missed the flight because they're drunk, they're doing drugs, whatever. That's probably what happened. They probably slept through their alarms because they're passed out, etc. Does that, is saying that openly, truthfully in front of a group of people on camera, is that helpful? No. Like, I, I just, I don't know what she wants. And Kyle makes it all, it's all about telling the truth, which she does that in the Denise Richards season too. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Just tell the, like, it's not up to you to decide when people want to tell their truth. Especially when it's serious things like maybe someone cheated on their husband or Kim is a drug addict or alcoholic or whatever. So it's like, it's just bringing it up at this point and in this moment to me is so ridiculous. It's more just about winning, about like, you know, Kyle's annoyed with Kim for a million reasons. The li Like I said, the list goes on and on. And she does have valid reasons to get annoyed by her, but handling it in this way is not helpful. So um, later, Kim also misses the catamaran. And Kyle and all of them are waiting and waiting. And finally, they just leave without them. Um, Kyle says, like, she is embarrassed about Kim's behavior, which is fair. Like, again, it's totally fair for her to be embarrassed about Kim's behavior and for all of them to be annoyed, especially Kyle for and Mauricio, for them being late, missing the catamaran, etc. Um, but again, how we handle it is there's also something to be said for how it's handled. So at dinner, Kyle can another dinner, Kyle confronts Kim. It turns into an argument and Ken says, we don't care, basically, when they're saying like they're upset about it. It's not clear what Kyle wanted out of the situation. Maybe an apology. She does say that they can't keep doing what they do with no repercussions, but they were. There, there are repercussions. They missed the boat. They missed the boat. They missed the fun time. They missed their flights. They missed some of the time in Hawaii. So there are repercussions. There are the natural consequences, right? And you think Kim doesn't know that, like, she's disappointing people? She knows. Um, so she keeps kind of lecturing them, and it's just going in circles. Again, they're adults who missed a boat. The real issue is the addiction, okay? But because of this, they can't enjoy the dinner. Ken and Kim, you know, get mad, and they leave. And Ken is just, you know, he's a real a-hole, and... Like, listen, I wouldn't like him either if my sister was dating him. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have even wanted him on the trip. But that's the tough part is you want your sister to go and she's with this guy. So what are you going to do? So, yeah. Um, then LVP and Kyle get into it about trying to control the situation. And LVP again hits the nail on the head. Like, I very much aligned with her viewpoints on this topic like, LVP is sympathetic to Kyle's feelings, and Kyle has the right to her feelings, which I agree with LVP. But she also says to Kyle basically exactly what I'm saying. Kim's an adult. 
that's who she is. You can't force it if she, you know, sleeps late, etc. And she's like, that's, you know, there's nothing you can do. You, you have to just let her figure things out, even if she does go down the completely wrong path and make things worse. Kyle's very, like, you know, judgy about this. She's like, she sleeps till three o'clock in the afternoon. And again, yeah, it sucks. But again, like being upset about it to this degree, she's allowed to be upset about it. Sorry, I, that's not what I mean. But constantly bringing it up at like a dinner party and that's not helpful. Um, Mauricio steps into Lisa. And he's like, we're just trying to help. It's her sister, etc. Finally, Brandy, of all people, jumps in with some common sense, which she doesn't always. But in this case, she does. She says, listen, Kim needs help. She's not going to get help until she wants to. Until then, there's nothing you can do. This is exactly right. Because, listen, I understand that, you know, all the stuff with the context, this was a long, this was, you know, 15, 20 years ago. We do know more about addiction and all that now. But one thing that was still common sense then that I think most people should know is that somebody is not going to get help until they want it. Right. And Brandy knows this. LVP knows this. Everybody seems to know it. And I even think Kyle and Mauricio know it. They're just not enacting it. Kyle says Kim is an enabler, which 100% true. Again, you can't do anything about that because you can't force her to get rid of him. The real problem is that, again, and Kyle did say this earlier in the season, she needs control. And I think if Kim isn't doing well, she somewhat sees it as a reflection of herself and her own failure. Like she didn't do a good job of controlling it. Control is also a way that people sort of curb their anxiety, right? They feel like if they're in control, then they don't have to be as anxious. Letting go of control is extremely anxiety inducing. And I do think that, you know, Kyle has said she has anxiety and struggles with that. So that's probably part of the control thing. So, and that's probably what, you know, that is probably what causes a lot of tension between Kim and Kyle because Kim is like, you're trying to control everything. You're telling me I can't make the right decisions. And that just makes her more mad at Kyle and makes them her act out more. So Kim says, basically, this is later, but Kim says, if Kyle wanted the best for me, she would have knocked on my door and said, what happened? Instead of the accusatory tone, you're so late. Oh, my God. What's wrong with you? Yeah, that's fair. Um, it's clear that Kim feels shame. Um, Kim's doing a lot of things wrong, and she knows that. So she has a lot of shame already. And I think then when it comes from an external source, like one of the people who's supposed to unconditionally love you, it just sends her over the edge. Um, so Kim shows up to the opening of Sir. This is later. They're back from Hawaii. She's clearly messed up. Like, very. Um, everyone notices how skinny she looks. This is the one where she's like, I'm going to have another baby. Like, yeah. So Faye and Kyle keep con. This is one thing I hate about, like, the early 2000s is the amount that people thought it was okay to comment on people's bodies. I think because like, it's like, oh, well, we're calling you thin. So it's like basically in Beverly Hills, this is like a compliment. Um, but they keep commenting on it. It is very annoying because they know she's an addict. So a part of me is like, maybe we don't need to comment on it when we know the person has an issue. I mean, this is just a thing in general, like LVP and others were like commenting on Taylor's thinness a lot. You know, I think it was just, you know, it was one of those things. Um, but it's like, you know, the person is going through, like, you know, Taylor's in an abusive relationship and she's not eating because of extreme stress, etc. And you know, and anxiety and you know, Kim, same, except for addiction, etc. It's like, you don't have to keep saying it. Um, so, okay, where was I? Oh yeah. Kim sits down and basically tells Kyle that Ken treats her poorly Tells her she doesn't look good. Um, she's a lost soul. He can't help her. And Kyle says, 
well, you're difficult too. Like that, that's your response. (laughs) Your sister's telling you that her boyfriend basically emotionally abuses her. And that's your response. I, okay. So then Kyle is like, if he's bad, you know, why doesn't she leave? Like, do these women have no context for, like, do they they have no ability for critical thought? This was like the whole season too. Like, well, Taylor's husband's abusive. Why doesn't she just leave? Like, do they not know how hard it is to get out of an, like, okay, maybe they don't know. But can you at least try to understand that it's not as easy as like, we're breaking up, bye. Especially because they do it with Taylor all the time. It's like, she's married and has a kid. Do you know how scared she must be? And these guys will threaten. They'll threaten to kill you themselves. Like, it's it, like they all just act so blase about it. And like, yeah, in Kim's situation, it it was a little easier for her to leave. I mean, we don't really know the full story. We know they break up, but he was probably saying things like, you know, oh, if you if you if I if you leave me, you'll never find someone else because like that's why he tells her she doesn't look good and that she's a lost soul and all this stuff, because that makes her feel like she'll never find anyone else. Right? Like it's just and I know everyone's different and maybe not everyone has thinks about things the same way i get that but it's like they're the whole season is very frustrating because the women in general when it comes to taylor and then kyle when it comes to kim don't they just don't seem like they are as empathetic or understanding as you would hope they are more towards taylor at certain points but Then they go back and forth with like, everything was my fault. And Kyle says Kim never apologizes. And if she tries to confront her, she turns into the bad guy and that she really just wants Kim to be happy, you know, and they get kind of like emotional. And Kyle says she wants Kim to be a responsible adult. And Kim says, you know, maybe I'm not sophisticated and mature. So now Kim is kind of getting high school-ish, like just like, fine, you think I'm irresponsible? Fine, I will be then. Maybe I'm just not mature, <laughs> right? And then Kyle's like, well, that's not what I mean. Um, and, you know, they they do have kind of like an emotional moment. Um, now, there is one point, by the way, I just want to give some credit to Faye. Because there is one point in the season where Kyle and Mauricio are talking to Faye in the kitchen about the abuse. And Faye explains, because she knows about this topic, that it's very common for women to go back to abusive men. She explains that there's a psychological aspect to it. Um, However, then on the season finale, when Taylor's at Sir, Kyle says, well, we just have a hard time because you say it's terrible, but then you keep going back. And that just doesn't fit the profile and we're confused. So Faye did explicitly explain this to her. And she even gives all the reasons why the women go back, what the men say to convince them. Yet she still says that about both Kim and Taylor at the finale. So I'm sorry. There's only so much credit I can give. She makes no effort to learn or understand addiction, domestic violence, etc. Even LVP jumps in at this point with Taylor and says a lot of victims go back. Right? And we know now because I think it's in a later system uh, system season where LVP talks about being in a very abusive relationship at like 19. Adrian, too, in this season is very victim blamey. And again, context matters. It was, the world was more victim blamey then. It really was, right? But still, I just find it very frustrating. I found it frustrating the first time I watched Beverly Hills and this time too. Okay, so let's get to the reunion. Um, There's not a lot to say about the reunion with the whole group of ladies. Um, But there is things to say because then Kyle and Kim have that one-on-one sit down. And that there's a lot to say about. So (laughs) So Kim and Kyle um, have that sit down. But first we have the normal reunion. And Kyle takes a lot of flack 
at the reunion for her quote unquote mean girl side that came out when Brandy came on. I mean, we all know, you know, the um the game night where Kim and Kyle both act like monsters. I mean, Kim's clearly on something. That doesn't excuse it because she acts like a complete monster by hiding the crutches. And her and Kyle are just so mean to Brandy. But you could, like, they egg each other on, which that did remind me of House of Hilton because I remember there was one part where they say that when the three sisters are together and getting along, that they can be really terrible to other women, like just bad talking, criticizing, like very like high school mean girly behavior. Like, I wasn't that surprised in that scene. And I mean, the first time I watched it, I was, don't get me wrong. Um, But the first time I watched that scene, I was like, whoa, like to me, it just came off as jealousy. Like, you know, this younger, hotter girl comes in, you know, Kyle's very insecure because like Kyle probably literally was worried that Brandy might sleep with her husband. I know as like, impartial outsiders were like, we know that that wouldn't happen and that Brandy probably wouldn't do that. Well, we knew she wouldn't do that. She might sleep with someone. Like she might join in for a threesome if she's invited, you know, she's like that. But I don't think she would have an affair with someone's husband. I think she would do a lot of bad things, just not that one. (laughs) So even with all she'd been through, she's at the end of the day, she's a single hot model-esque girl. And even, you know, we have our logical brains, but I think Kyle was working a lot off of, like, I don't know, just jealousy. And 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 again, she had good reason for it. When you're with a guy who's cheating and probably checking out other girls all the time, you get insecure about every single beautiful woman that comes by. You just do, right? So I don't even really blame her for that. I do blame her for how she treats Brandy and Kim because they are terrible. Um, so that really was like a nail in the coffin. So I remember one of the um, audience questions was like, wow, Kyle, you're my favorite, but maybe not after watching the game night. Uh, you acted like a mean girl. And Kyle kind of owns it and is like, I'm sorry. And then, you know, I that's not who I am. And I, I shouldn't have done that. And Camille says, though, which I thought was kind of funny, Camille says she's not surprised because she experienced that side of Kyle back in season one. Did we see it on camera? Not that much, which is why I really think, again, I do think Kyle's always gotten a good edit on this show. And she's always gotten preferential treatment. So then we have the sit down, um, the Kim and Kyle sit down. Because again, there was stuff involving... Kyle's conflicts with other people, a lot of stuff about Taylor, but I want to focus on Kim and Kyle. So Kim and Kyle sit down. Uh, First, it's Kim alone. She admits that she's an alcoholic. And Kim says, at least I'm trying. And she says she gets people being annoyed, but at least she's trying. She admits there was a family intervention. She mentions her daughter being there, but she doesn't mention Kyle. Um, She does say that her medication... Um, you know, kind of adds to her behavior with the alcohol. She has extreme panic disorder and anxiety. And when she's sober, she's suffering, basically. She says she was sober at the start of the season in Colorado. That was when she comforted Taylor, which I do believe, because when you watch her in those scenes, she seems much more herself and normal. Um, And that she, you know, as the season went on, she lost confidence in herself and started drinking. She says she hasn't been able to watch this show because of shame. Again, always goes back to that, that feeling of shame. And again, like, she does have things to be ashamed for. And she, because she's made a lot of mistakes and done a lot of things that are messed up, right? But, you know, at the same time, I can understand how when you have a sister like Kyle who is one who likes to control things and is such a strong personality, I can see how that would compound the issue. Okay. It's again, it's not all Kyle's fault. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it compounds the issue. She said, you know, she was late and absent a lot during the season. And that's, you know, that's a big sign of someone using, right? And that is something that family members, friends of addicts should know. 
Kim says she still uses medication, or so, sorry, she still um, blames medication for why she acted weird on game night. She says she was not on illegal drugs like how Brandy says and emphasizes how much Brandy's comments impacted her kids. She says her kids cried. They were devastated, you know, so we can imagine why she was so mad at Kyle after the limo thing, right? Because, you know, being on camera and how it impacts her children, um, cause that was something that like Kim was not able to get over in season two and mentioned a few times, which again, she has the right to be upset about that certainly, but if they ever have any hope to, you know, be together and be a family, like that is something that they have to work through. So Kyle comes out and joins and Andy asks Kyle, um, you know, were you the one who suggested Kim for the show and do you regret it? <laughs> Kyle says, actually, she does not regret it because she thinks long term it has helped them. But Kim admits that she's still upset about the limo. And Kyle says she still feels bad about it. Kim says her fight with Kyle was private and, you know, they, she doesn't want to talk about it. But she's still going to make her alcoholism public now. Um, so Kim says she feels... Basically, that Kyle gets too involved. And this is like sober Kim, right? After rehab. So Kim says she feels Kyle gets too involved. Um, you know, Kyle says, well, we all get involved with each other's families and kids. So it kind of goes both ways, which that's true. They do seem like that type. However, I think what Kim is saying is you get more involved in like my adult choices, which is a little different. And that might be where, again, we have some tension. Andy asks about the trip for Mo's birthday, and Kim is still annoyed. Because <laughs> she's like, once I miss the flight and apologize, what's the point of harping on it over and over? Which, I'm sorry, I agree with Kim. There is no point. Kyle says, you know, oh, well, flying together, that's part of the experience. Which, I get that. But again, she missed the flight. So you're disappointed, yes, but there's nothing, you can't rewind time. Kim says, yeah, I know, but again, and Kim says this, what could I do once I've missed the flight? I've missed the flight. Kyle says, you know, it's about me wanting to be with you. And Kim's like, yes, I do get that, right? So again, often, you know, some of Kyle's feelings, they do come from a loving place of like, she loves her sister, it's about the expression of them because people only know what you're expressing. No one can read your mind, right? So once she says it like that, Kim softens, which that's what the two of them need. They need more softening, right? However, I don't get the impression that that's what they grew up with. I think they grew up with, you know, like toughness and you get a slap when you do something and you compete for mom's love and and violence and tempers, right? Like that's what they know, you know? So Andy asks Kyle what Kim has put her through and Kyle, basically she won't say. I think she's playing it safe here too because she knows she's was still in hot water about the limo thing with Kim and they haven't gotten over that. So she's not going to share more private stuff at this point. But Kyle does say, like, they do kind of have a nice ending in that, in one sense, like, they got Kim, sorry, still seems annoyed with Kyle because of her, like, controlling tendencies and lack of faith in her. Um, but Kyle does say that she feels like she has her big sister back and they hold hands and they do seem happier. You can tell, like, it's not perfect. <laughs> and you can tell... You can tell that there's still underlying tension. And I think the big thing is the limo thing, which we know eventually Kim gets over because she gets over Brandy and the crystal meth comment. But you can tell like anything that like upsets her children like that and shares something super private to the world is something that Kim takes very, very seriously. Like, it's, I mean, that limo ride was so wild, but it also, it really changed the trajectory of their lives. That one sentence. I mean, who knows what would have happened if that was never said. Maybe they could have mended their relationship so much sooner and gone back to it. 
they seem to be in a good place now, but look how long it took, right? Like, I think that alcoholic comment, because they are so trained in privacy. Like Big Kathy, and and you see this with Kathy Hilton too, privacy and keeping their sister's drama and family things private is such a, a just a key thing that was drilled into their head by Big Kathy. And, you know, Kyle has maybe strayed from it the most because of being on this show and because she just wants to be liked. Um, so she has let things slip. I don't want to say she's done it a lot because I actually think that Kyle hasn't been very authentic and open in all her years on the show. And when she gets forced to, she kind of just melts down like a baby. But she's had those moments that were raw and real just by accident. And it usually is because one of her sisters is around. Um, even like, you know, we saw after the Aspen trip, like Kathy gives her that really menacing stare like Kyle as in like shut your mouth right because you know that that's <laughs> that's like the family's motto right um yeah even like the most recent episode where Kyle and Kim have that talk in the kitchen not the most recent episode but season sorry and Kim starts crying about how they wasted so much time and da 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 Kyle even said in the after show which I thought that was such a beautiful moment and was so good for both of them. And then Kyle in the after show was like, yeah, I, I kind of wish we had had that in private off camera. I was like, Kyle, you shouldn't wish that. That was like one of the only scenes that made you look good. <laughs> and like your sister was having an authentic, like it's just like this, the three of them just have this, I actually think in some ways Kim has it the least because of maybe the addiction, but they just have this thing about like, they want to be famous and be on TV, but then they also don't want to share a lot. Like, it's it's very weird. Um, but yeah, I do think that, like, obviously Kim has been the most authentic. And the reason, though, is because of being, I think, intoxicated. And then it's like, okay, I kind of have to admit to it now because, like, look how I acted, right? And look at some of the stuff I said, um, et cetera, right? Um, but, you know, a lot of Kim's best moments are, like, telling people off because of that. Like, Rinna for kind of outing her and saying she was close to death or whatever. <laughs> it's just like, oh, man. That's why it's kind of funny to me sometimes or weird to me sometimes why Kyle isn't more understanding of why Kim was so upset in those seasons. Like, Kyle comes from that same school of that same, you know, Richard sisters, Big Kathy training of don't talk about things. And then she, it's like she still more takes Rin aside that season when Rin is like, won't talk, stop talking about her sister's addiction and trying to make it a storyline and trying to say she's close to death. Like, it's very, like, I see why Kim was pissed about that. I think, I mean, I think most people do. So if you want to hear more, Again, you can sign up for my Patreon. Um, all my Richard Sisters episodes are free and they're not going to be behind the paywall or anything like that. Um, but I do talk about Kim and Kyle and just like the newer episodes. Like I did a whole thing about that conversation in the kitchen um, that they had on the most recent system, uh, season system. I cannot talk today. I'm so sorry, everyone. I haven't eaten lunch yet. That's the problem. Okay. Instead of being hangry, my brain is just malfunctioning. Um, so if you want more, uh, patreon.com slash bravo and Botox, you can check it out. It's $5 a month. I do four extra episodes a month. And I often talk about uh, what's going on with Beverly Hills just in general. Um, but I talk about other shows too. I talk about, you know, things I've heard about, you know, tea and things like that. And it's a little bit more unfiltered. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me. And I will be back with part five, where we'll be going into season three. And there is a lot of juicy stuff in there as well. I've already gone through about half the season, I think. Maybe a little less than half. 
Um, but we will be getting into all of that. I have also got some great suggestions from people on other sources I can check out. So I'm working on, you know, finishing up with the Paris and Love stuff. And then I'm, I'll probably just do a random like Kathy edition episode. You know, you won't have to wait till I go through all the Beverly Hills seasons because I'll just finish up Paris and Love and then do that. And then I've had a lot of people recommend that I read Paris's memoir because there's a lot of Kathy stuff in there. So I'm going to do that. Listen, we need like a whole Kathy episode that's just Kathy, right? We're going to do it. Okay. So until next time, keep overanalyzing Bravo. Thanks for listening, everyone. Your support really means everything to me. And this show wouldn't be possible without you, the listeners. So please, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a five-star rating and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. For more, you can join my Patreon, patreon.com slash bravo and Botox. And for $5 a month, you'll get four extra podcast episodes a month. You'll also get early releases of Bravo Paper episodes and more. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel at The Bravo Papers and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Bravo and Botox and at The Bravo Papers. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can at buymeacoffee.com slash Bravo and Botox. You know, send your love through some much needed caffeine. And any guest that was on today's episode will be in the show notes, all their social media and contact information. So thank you so much, everyone. Keep overanalyzing Bravo. Bravo.